Statistics and Excel. Dice Central Limit Theorem Example Problem Part Number One. Get ready and some coffee because it's time to get realistic with statistics and Excel. Because we're sick of the lies. We're sick of the lip, man. It's time to get down to the data. And data is what we do. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if you do have access, there are three tabs down below. Example, practice. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Blank example, in essence, answer key, the practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting. Blank tab, the one we will be working on, as you can see, is blank. We will construct the entire practice problem from a blank worksheet practicing our Excel tools as we do so. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be constructing. Looking at concepts related to the central limit theorem, a core principle, very practical, applicable principle in the realm of statistics. We're gonna get an idea of it with a dice problem, starting out thinking about rolling one dice, thinking about the results of rolling one dice, graphing those results, then thinking what are the combinations of two dice that we can have. Looking at the results of two dice, we'll practice imposing the one dice scenario on the two dice scenario in our graphs and look at some concepts related to that. Then we'll think about what if we have three dice? We will graph that information out and see if we can put all of that information on one graph in such a way that it is relevant to us. Then we'll, go, we'll switch over to a line graph and say, what about four dice over here? And then five dice. Next, we'll try to say, okay, I, I kind of like this bell-shaped curve that we're having here. And if we can get a normal distribution, that would of course be great because we know a lot about the normal distribution. And that's one of the core principles and concepts that are quite applicable from the central limit theorem concept. So now we're gonna be saying, okay, what if I take the average of two dice instead of taking the totals of the two dice? And again, we'll graph that information out. And then we'll say, what if I take the average of three dice and we'll graph that information out, four dice and so on and so forth. And we'll basically analyze and get some good uh, resources in terms of the concepts as well as practicing our graphs and our tables and how we can put multiple information on one graph. Okay, so here we go. The practice tab, as you can see, has pre-formatted cells so that you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting if you so choose. We're going to be showing you how to do the formatting, however, from the blank worksheet. All right, in the blank worksheet, we're gonna, I'm gonna increase the size, holding control, scrolling up. I'm currently at this uh, 235%, closing that out. I'm gonna select the entire worksheet as typically we do to start our practice problems, right click on it and format those cells. I like to make it currency, negative numbers, bracketed and red with no dollar signs to start off with, we'll add uh, and no decimals. We will add the decimals as needed as we go. Okay. I also like to make it bold, home tab, font group, bold. You might not need to do that, but I think it stands out a bit more in the screen cast, the screen recording, so people can see it a bit better. All right. Let's start off with one dice situation. If we have one dice, we have the numbers that could come up of one, two, I'm going to select those two numbers and put my cursor on the fill handle, drag it down to six. We have six options on a one dice scenario. The chance of each option, chance on one throw, I'm just going to put a one, is one out of the total of six. You have one chance 
for one throw out of a total for the odds will be one six. Let's put the total down here. Let's put a total and say this is going to be sum. I'm going to say alt equals. That's the easiest way to do the sum function. And then our odds over here are going to be one dice, one throw. It's going to be one over or divided by six. Let's put an F4 on the keyboard because I want to be able to copy this next one down. Not moving the six down, but in moving the one down okay. Before I drag that down, I'm going to percentify to recognize. I'm going to percentify and add some decimals, then double click on that fill handle button and boom. Then I can sum it up. It should add up to 100. Alt equals and let's percentify to recognize. Percentify, I recognize now. And now I'm going to say, let's make this black and white on the header. Home tab, font group. We're going to make that black and white. It's easy to see that way. It's just black and white, man. It's like a newspaper, an old newspaper. What is a newspaper? That's where liars write stuff, isn't it? Home tab font group. Okay. I, <laughs> that, uh, let's go to the, let's put a, make it blue. If you don't have that blue, I'm just going to hit here. It's on the standard and here that's the blue. Okay. Not all newspaper writers are liars. I don't know. I've never seen a, a newspaper in like the last 20 years that's not full of garbage. Okay. Okay. Let it go. We're going to we're going to select that information and then let's make a skinny D over here. Well, we could then graph that. What does that look like if we were to graph it? So I'm just going to graph this information and and say, OK, that's going to be let's insert and then go to our chances and insert the graph like so. Boom. And this will just be one dice. I'm going to label it one dice. OK. There it is. Do, do, do. Let's just put that down here. And so that's a pretty boring graph. One out of, you know, one out of uh, six chance and so on. So let's now say, okay, let's make a skinny D, make it a little skinny. We'll put it to like right here. And then we'll say, say now, what if we had two dice? Let's say we have a red die and like a black die red and black now so we're going to say let's make this one red just so we can easier make it see it easy more easily and then the black dice i'm going to make that black and white and then we'll center these two so now we have two dice so 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 now if you have two dice and you add the results together now you have different combinations of results that you can get every time you throw the two dice so how can we kind of figure out what those results are? Let's actually just map them out. This gets a little bit tedious. Bear with me here. We're going to say, well, well, we could say what could happen is we could have a one, two, and then let's drag this down to six, right? One to six. And, and then on the red dice and then the black dice, what we can compare that to it just having a one. So in other words, Let's change the red dice one to six and compare it to the black dice being static for the first set of possible outcomes that we could have, right? And so we're gonna say, I could have a red dice that's a one and a one, the red dice is a two, the black dice is a one, the red dice is a three, the black dice is a one, the red dice is a four, the black dice is a one, the red dice is a five, the black dice is a one, six versus one. Let's make these green so I can separate the next bit that I'm going to do, I'm going to put borders, make it green. And then the next one, I could say one, two, and then put this down like six here do, 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 and say that's the red dice. And then the black dice comes up with a two. So I'm going to compare all of the possibilities that of the red dice being one, th uh, one through six and the black dice being a two. So in other words, we're keeping the black dice static at a two and looking at all the different combinations uh, if if it is a two, right? So then, so, so, and, and notice that we have the same outcome here, a two and a one and a two and a one, but they're different because we're, we have the two different dice. So they both come out to three, right? But we have the two different dice. So I'm gonna make this one blue 
just so we can see that's the diff my different table the different set and then let's do it again so now we're going to say all right now we have one two down to six do, 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 and we could say and the black dice is going to be a three so we say the three all the way down okay and so then we're going to go okay and that's going to be the green let's i'm just putting these alternating colors so we can kind of get an idea of what's going on and then of course one two down to six versus a four and then this time i'm going to put four and i'm going to do equals the one above it this time and i can copy that down it's always the one above it let's make that blue so we're just alternating and then i can say okay that's what i'll do i'll say okay right now okay i said it i just said it okay and then i'll copy that down i'm not i don't just say i'm gonna say okay when i say i say i i'm gonna say okay i say okay sometimes and then let's go to the home tab font group make that black or not let's make that green and then one more time uno vase mas por favor one two and then we'll copy that down and then buckle our shoe and then we're going to say this is going to be for the six equals the one above it copy it down do, 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 make it blue and those are the combos so those are the combos that we can have here people all right so what does that come out to then uh, let's do a count we can say <clears throat> the count is going to be equals count i don't need i don't need to see the the total numbers i just want to count the combos so i'm going to put Control shift up and shift down and enter 36 so we have 36 uh different combos okay that's interesting let's take a look at the sum of those let's make this black and white and center so if i have two ones that sums out to be two <laughs> i could copy that down let's put our cursor on it fill handle take it down so then four five six and then if i have a two uh, a one and a two that's a three four five six and so on these are the different combos that we can have for total number combinations so now let's just make this bottom bit blue and border just our normal blue so bordered and blue and then i'll make this blue and bordered and border and blue okay all right so we have that so then then let's try to let's try to say group these numbers into basically our buckets so we could say all right what's the highest number i have here i could use a max function to do that max the max or equals max value of these numbers is as you can see a 12 so that's going to be the highest number that we can get to so let me delete that i'm going to make a skinny h and then we're going to say all right so let's say then we have our our totals are one two down to 12. i'll select these two copy it down to 12. those are our possible outcomes if we have two dice and we're adding them together and let's make this black and white and centered black white centered okay and so then we want to uh do a a count a count formula to say how many different combinations of ones twos and so ons can we have if we have the two dice scenario they don't all come up evenly uh anymore right so now we can say all right i want to count equals count and let's say if one condition count if so i don't need an s just a normal if the range i'm picking up this sum range control shift down and then control backspace to go back up i would like to make that the same range as i copy it down therefore f4 on the keyboard putting dollar signs before the letters and numbers telling excel not to move the range when i move then i'm going to put a comma to the next argument which is the criteria so i want to find the ones find all the ones over here and then put the count count them 
right? Count all the items that are ones. So I'm gonna say, okay, there are none because with two dice, the lowest number you can have is two ones, which comes out to two. So if I double click on this though, we have one way that we could get a two, which are two ones, right? And then we have the, the, uh, the threes, two ways to get a three. We have three ways to get a, to get a four, four ways to get a five, uh, five ways to get a six, six ways to get a seven, uh, five ways to get an eight, four ways to get a nine, three ways to get a 10, one, two ways to get an 11, and one way to get a 12. All right, interesting. Seems to peak in the middle there. So I can say, let's make this black, white. Let's center that. Let's select this whole thingy dingy and make it bordered and blue. All right, and then we can do our our totals over here. Let's do a count uh, this way again, equals to count. This will give us our double check that we got. We picked up all the numbers, equals account tab of control shift up, shift down. So we, we have, hold on, hold, hold on a second. Let's do a sum here, not a count. Let's do a sum equals the sum. And that'll give us, that should give us the count that we got to before the 36. All right, so 36, that ties out to the 36 we had there. So that gives us some assurance. And then our odds of these numbers uh, coming up, we have this many times it could come up, like a two could come out one time out of uh, the 36. Whereas a three could come out, a four could come out three times out of 36. Because there's 36 you know, different combos and there are three ways to get to the four. So let's do that ratio. It's gonna be one, or let's take the zero here, divided by the, the total here, 36. That 36, I want not to move down when I copy it down, therefore F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the letter and the number, so that this number will move down, but not the bottom bit. Okay, enter. Let's, let's then, I'm gonna go up top and say that we want to make that a percent, number group percentify let's add some decimals boom boom then i'm going to double click on the fill handle to drag it down or drop it down then we're going to say alt equals it should add up to 100 at the bottom for our double check number number percentify adding some decimals there it is okay so let's format these i'm going to make these blue and bordered border blue let's select these items here make them border blue border blue and then i'm going to select this one i'm going to format paint that over to the right okay so now let's do another graph of the count over here and look at the different number of uh, combinations that we could have so i'm going to select these and then i'm going to go to the insert i'm just going to go to the charts normal bar chart we'll con we'll switch over to a line chart later but for now we'll just do the normal bar chart here moving this to the right and then i'm going to say this is going to be for uh two dice so we have the two dice bar chart boom and so you can see now it's peaking at that seven so there's six ways to get the seven uh, we saw that the two had one way to get to the two and so on and so forth. So that's going to be the look of the chart. Now, what I'd like to do is basically graph this other data basically on top of it, right? So I could do that by just saying, all right, let me add the other data so I can kind of compare these. And I'm going to go, okay, I can say, here's my data. And I can say, add data. And this is going to be the one dice data one dice data which is going to be these over here do, 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 do. and okay but that kind of comes out to a problem because because i'd like this total here to be equivalent to this total here so it'll make more sense kind of when they're on top of each other so hold on i didn't refresh it here it is so there it is it's, they're all at one here but it's gonna make more sense, like I say, if I can get the same 36 compared to 36 rather than six. 
So how can I get some comparative data so I can look at those shapes more readily, especially as we then uh, have more dice that we're going to be rolling? So one way we could do it is I could take this here. I'm going to copy this and put this down here. I'm going to paste it normal, and then I'm going to paste it uh, just one, two, three, so they're hard-coded numbers just to make sure that I'm not pulling anything over from another location. And so there it is. And then I'm gonna say that this is gonna be the adjusted total, the adjusted total of 36. So I'm gonna say, duh, let's make this format paint over here. So what I'm gonna look at, look at these percentages and instead of taking it out of six, I'm gonna take it out of 36, but use the same ratio. So I'm gonna be saying this is gonna be 36 times the odds and this 36 i don't want it to move down as i copy it down therefore f4 on the keyboard and enter and so then let's add uh do i need and i'll just add something and then i'm going to copy that down so boom so now it's out of six and if i total this up equals the sum the total is out of 36 and let's make this blue and bordered home tab font group and border blue. So now let me take this data and adjust it to this one. And I can say, all right, select the data. And then I'm gonna say, I want the, the first one, the first data in my key, I'm gonna edit, should be, which data is this? This is gonna be two dice. Okay, and then the second data with one dice, I'm gonna edit it. And I'm going to say I want the range now to be to be this range. Du, 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 du. Okay. And then boom. So now we have these two. I should probably put a key in here. So I'm going to say add a legend. So now you've got the one die, the two dice in blue, the one dice in uh, orange and we're looking at the same total of the 36 and and you can see of course this one's grouped together looking like this and then the two dice we have spread out here spreading out to a longer uh a higher amount because it could go up to 12 versus the uh one dice is going to go up to six all right so we can then cut we can continue this concept out and say well what if we had three dice let's just observe the shape of the graphs if we then took this same concept uh, to three dice. So how can we do that? It gets a little bit tedious, but not too bad. I could say, all right, let me take these two, these uh, items here. Let's just take the, the red and the black. I'm gonna copy the red and the black, and then I'm gonna put that in the uh, AT column, and then I'm gonna add an orange dice. So now we have an orange dice. Home tab, font group, we're gonna make the color of this one orange and white and then center it. Okay, now let's actually put the orange on the other side. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take the, the TW and cut it, control cut, and I'll put it over here on this one. Control paste, and then I'll delete these two columns, right click and delete. I'm gonna delete the total down here for now. Let's get rid of that. I'm just gonna right click and delete it and I'll shift the cells up. Okay, so how can I add this one? Well, these two, if I had two dice, all of these combinations are just of those two dice. So I could say, well, I, let's keep the first one as just a one. I could have this equals the one. I'm gonna say equals the one above it and then have all of these combinations with that one just equaling the number one, right? And then I could do, all, and then I'm just gonna copy this down and do it to six times. So that's a little bit tedious, but it's not too bad. It's pretty easy to do in Excel. I can take this whole thing and say, all right, I could take that whole thing, paste it down here and make this a two. So then I can have this whole thing and that's a two now. And I could take this whole thing and say, all right, let's do it again and paste it and make that a three. And then let's take this whole thing and copy and paste it and make that a four. 
And then let's take this whole thing and then copy and paste it and make that a five. And then we'll take this whole thing and we'll copy and paste it, make that a six. And boom, we have it. This long list of data, not too difficult. We can say, okay, what's the count here? Let's count that up. We could say the different combos. If I did this right, we have the count equals the count tab, control shift up, shift down. We come out to uh, 216. Let's double check that. The number of combinations should be equal to three dice at six, six to the, to the third or six times six times six. And that comes out to that 216. So it looks like we have all of our combinations there. Let's make this black. Let's make this uh, blue. And then, I'm sorry, <laughs> bordered blue. Control shift up and then uh, shift down. Uh, I messed up. Control shift down. Make that blue and bordered as well. Okay. So once we have that, then let's make a skinny W. I'm going to make a skinny W over here. And then once again, we can take our totals. What, what are the totals that we can have? The highest total we can have with the three. Oh, wait a sec. I need a sum. I need a sum. Let's undo, 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 undo. Getting ahead of yourself. Let's do a sum column and make that black, white, and center. And then we'll sum this up equals the sum of these three. So the smallest number we can get is a three, three ones. All right. And then we can copy that down. I can make that black, bordered and blue. And then if I say control shift down, looks like we've got everything. All right. I'll make this a little smaller. Now we can make a skinny X, skinny X. And then I'm going to say this will be the totals. What are the totals we can have? The highest number we can get to is going to be equal to the max. Let's test it out and say, what's the highest number in this set of numbers in the sum column? The highest number is an 18. So I'm going to say the numbers could be either one, two, copying the totals down to 18, fill handle, dragging it down. We could have 18 different numbers and there's different combinations to get those different numbers with the three dice. And so we will do our count of, of, of uh, the, different, the different numbers over here, the count of different ways that, uh, that we can get to basically these numbers. So we're gonna say, all right, in other words, how many threes do we have? How many, uh, how many fours do we have? How many fives do we have? How many sixes do we have? And so on and so forth. So let's do that. We're going to say equals the count if tab selecting the sum range control shift down and control backspace. And then I want to say F4 on the keyboard so that I can then copy that down without moving the range down comma. And the criteria is the number one. Find the number ones over here. There aren't going to be any because you can't get a one, right? Because the lowest number is a three. But if I copy that down, then there's six ways to get a five, 10 ways to get a six, seven ways or 15 ways to get a seven, 21 ways to get an eight, 25 ways to get a nine, 27 ways to get a 10, 27 ways to get an 11. Then it goes back down 25 ways to get a 12 and so on and so forth till one way to get that number 18. Let's make this black and white home tab font group, making this black, white bordered, Selecting these items, control shift down. Let's make this uh, bordered and blue. And then we can total this total. Let's sum this up equals the S U M and control shift up, shift down. So that comes out to that 216, which is the same number we got to, of course, control shift down here. So that's our double check. So that looks good. Let's select that go to the uh, border blue, and then I can make a graph out of this, right? So let's do the same thing and make our little graph out of 18. Let's see how many times those come up. We're gonna go to the uh, insert and then chart making a graph. We'll keep it with a, 
a bar chart one more time and then possibly move it to a line chart next time. We'll show you how to change those between the two. And this is going to be for three uh, dice. So let's say totals for three, three dice. And so then, okay, let's go ahead and say, let's add a legend. I'm gonna say plus add a legend. Okay, there it is. And then I'm gonna add my other data we had before. What about the two dice? I'd like to compare that to what we did with the two dice. So I'm gonna copy this one. That's what we had with the two dice. Bring this over here to do, 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 and say, okay, let's paste that down under. I'm gonna paste it normal and then I'll paste it one, two, three. So the numbers are static. I don't have formulas in here anymore. And I'm just gonna use these odds to now calculate this one. So this is gonna be the adjustment to the 216. So instead of being out of 36, I would like to do the same method we used before to make it out of 216 using the same ratios, which might make the graphs a little bit more comparable. So I'm gonna go to the home tab, paintbrush, paintbrushy this over here. This will be equal to the 216 F4, because I want to be able to copy that down and then times our odds. And that one I'd like to not have F4 because I want it to change as we move down. Home tab, number, percentify, adding some decimals, double click in the fill handle. So that, oh wait, I shouldn't have percentified it. Dang it, let's undo it. Undo, undo. That one's not percentified. Uh, let's just add some decimals and then we'll double click it down. I don't even need the decimals. Let's get the decimals out of here. I'm getting tired. What is wrong with you? You're confusing everyone. I'm sorry. I'm tired. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Okay, focus. Here we go. We're gonna say this is gonna be bordered and blue. Okay, so that's for totals for two numbers and then we can copy that same one over that we had for for the dice of one one dice so we'll copy this one over and say okay paste uh we could just paste it normal and then instead of being out of 36 i want to adjust this to be out of 216 so same thing i'm just going to say this equals this times this and the first one needs to be F4, so I can copy it down. So now we're just gonna convert that same ratios, but make it out of 216 for the total. And then let's put those superimposed on top of this one, so possibly we can compare them. So I'm gonna go to the chart design data, and I'm going to say, let's first edit this first data series and say this is gonna be three dice. That's going to adjust our key over here. Three dice, add another one. And this is going to be for the two dice. And for the two dice, I'm going to adjust the range and put that down here. That's going to be this one out of 216. Boom, not including the total. Okay. And then I'll add one more for one dice. I should say die. I don't, I'm not sure I'm doing the plural and the singular properly, but I'm an accountant, okay? I'm not like a linguist or anything. So get, cut me some slack, man. Cut me some, cut me, cut the slack. Cut this. So there we have it. So now we have, so you can see what's happening to the shape here. So we have this shape, I, we, had, we adjusted it to have like the same area under it, right? And so we have this one and then it starts to look like this and then it's getting more spread out over, as the total basically uh, gets larger and we get this kind of nice shape, we kind of like the look of that shape when we're trying to figure things out statistically because it's starting to look kind of bell-shaped. However, uh, it's, it's becoming difficult to kind of compare these three because of course the numbers are changing, which in the future will take the average, we'll start to look at the average and compare those out. But before we do, in the future presentations, we'll do a couple more and just say, okay, what if we did it, what if we brought it out to, to uh, four dice and even five dice, and then we'll practice comparing our graphs so that we can compare our graphs and then 
we'll take a look at the same kind of thing, but looking at the averages and then consider the standard deviations uh, and, and the concepts that can come from that, which will lead into the ideas, of course, that could be quite applicable of the bell-shaped curve and why that is such a significant thing and useful for many areas within statistics.